Another uniquely northern tradition is that of the Yule Goat, or Yule Book in Danish. During the 19th century, the Yule Goat was the bringer of gifts in the north, before being replaced by the Nissa and Father Christmas. Predating even this tradition was that of men dressing up as the Yule Goat and walking through villages and groups while singing and performing. Like so many rituals, it's difficult to say exactly where and when the Yule Goat came from, but there are many ideas. The first, and perhaps most obvious, is that the Yule Goat represents Thor, whose goat-drawn chariot was one of the many examples of just how heavily identified he was with this animal. Another idea is that the Yule Goat is derived from an even older tradition, shared with other Indo-European people, and that it represents harvest and good fortune. Today, the Yule Goat is a common ornament throughout the Nordics, being particularly important in Sweden, where a giant hay statue called Jevle Bukken is erected in the city of Jevle every year. This colossal goat is famous for having been victim to arson a frankly hilarious amount of times. Since first being built in 1966, the goat has been damaged 37 times despite the presence of a fire station. In other words, in the time the tradition has been going, the goat has been burned down more years than not. Having spoken now of two mostly Nordic Christmas traditions, the Nisse and the Yule Goat, let's instead look at one found almost exclusively in Britain. This is the Yule Log. The Yule Log, also called a Yule Clog, is a log chosen to be burnt during the celebration. Traditionally, the log has been a very large chunk of wood, burning over a period of several days, during which it was believed to ward off foul spirits and ailments. The precise origins of the Yule Log are unknown, but it has long been assumed to descend from the Anglo-Saxon folk faith. Comparing the practice of the log to what we know about Germanic religion, certain parallels do seem to emerge, which might help to explain its origin. Wood, or more correctly, trees, filled a central role in the faith of the Teutons. And in this way, the Yule Log may be related to another key part of Christmas. Today, the Christmas tree is arguably the most important holiday tradition. It is the literal center of the festivities, around which people dance, sing, and place presents. New pagans have often been quick to claim that Christmas trees are an obvious pagan inheritance, and so it may be somewhat surprising to learn that this really isn't quite true. Christmas trees, as we know them today, first seem to have appeared in the Rhineland region of Germany during the early 18th century. From there they spread, first to the rest of Germany, and then throughout the world. It seems unlikely that this was the actual origin of the tradition, however, and like so many local customs, the Christmas tree may very well have existed for at least a century, if not more, before first being noted. It's even possible that other traditions similar to the Rhineland Christmas trees existed locally throughout the Germanic world, before all being absorbed into the unified concept of the holiday tree, but this is pure speculation. Don't
Trees, as I've mentioned earlier, played a vital role in the Germanic faith. The center of the Germanic universe was Yggdrasil, the world tree, or Axis Mundi. The nine worlds were nested within the branches of this vast tree, and at its base lies the well of wood, the waters of time and destiny. Yggdrasil was, of course, a metaphysical concept, rather than a tangible object, and as such, its symbolism permeated the world itself. Every tree was potentially a representation of the great ash, a myth made manifest, and for this reason, trees were often viewed as sacred by the old Teutons. It was common for trees to be placed in the middle of courtyards and religious sites, thus defining that area through the presence of a cosmic axis around which it could revolve. Here, a parallel with the Christmas tree immediately stands out. Like the world ash and sacred trees of folkish faith, the Christmas trees stand as centers of the holiday, literally in the very middle of the festival. It is, as mentioned before, the point around which people dance, around which they sing, around which they move and celebrate. In other words, during the course of the holiday, the Christmas tree is the Axis Mundi. Another aspect of the Christmas tree that harkens back to mighty Yggdrasil is its position in the yearly cycle. Yggdrasil's roots extend into the world navel, the well of Urd, which also symbolizes the past. Here, they ferry upwards the waters of fate. Through the great trunk and branches, these waters, again symbolic for fate, make their ways into the world. There, they affect Midgard and the people in it, but the opposite is also true. In the world, we have the ability to influence the waters of fate, and soon enough, they drip back down into the well, into the past. Put more simply, fate is predefined, but our actions at present can feed back into the past, giving us a form of autonomy, the ability to influence fate. These feedbacks are a cycle, and in this way, the Christmas tree, standing at the point when the end of the year feeds into its birth, when fall feeds into spring, is likewise symbolic 
of this endless cycle of renewal inherent in the concept of cyclical time. Regardless of the exact origins of the Christmas tree, one thing is certain. When first it originated in Germany, it was not a foreign import. It was, like all good traditions, born and shaped in its native land and culture. Even if the Christmas tree itself does not extend all the way back into the old faith, it is, nonetheless, deeply rooted in a Germanic worldview. That, perhaps, is the most important lesson out of all of this. Though the conversion to Christianity throughout the Germanic world was essentially complete by the start of the 12th century, the spirit of the folk faith never went away. The Germanic peoples have always had a strong will for independence and tradition, and this again made itself manifest in the ways they carried their old beliefs and customs into the new religion, often against the wishes of the priests and bishops. Christmas today is a Christian holiday, there's no doubt about that nor any reason to contest it. At the same time, however, it also remains Yule. Angels may now fly through the northern skies, but the heart of winter has not changed. Not since those very first students began honoring the gods at Yule, all those many years ago. To look out into the midwinter night is to gaze past the veil of modernity and out into a world where spirits still rule those frozen hills. Just be weary and strong of heart, for one never knows when the ghostly riders will sound their wild horns in the night. Oh, mm -hmm.